Hello again, Gooners. That was a nice hello, wasn't it, Alan? Uh, hello, Alan, Gooners! He's in the background. He's going to stay relatively invisible, perhaps. I don't know if we can entice him away from his desk, but here I am, the loose cannon. This is number 54. I'm in the J Soccer office. J Soccer office. I didn't lift. Leaving. Oh, Jay Soccer Magazine office. I knew I Jay Soccer Magazine office. Yeah, that's the plug over with. Um, I knew he couldn't resist it, but um, I'll be over there because Jay Soccer well. Magazine is out. Like tomorrow, he's going to the printers. So, all oh, right, okay. I'll, I'll be. I'll pop in again. Yeah, he might pop back, but I'll he's, swarm he's, back. <laughs> more like, but he might well come back. You know, every time I put this up on YouTube, it gets linked to uh, Monty Python clips. I wonder why. Well, he brings out the Python in me. If, if that's not a rude way of putting it. Um, plenty to talk about. Obviously, Theo Walcott is the number one topic at the moment because his advisors um, have rejected a deal of seventy-five thousand pounds per week. But as we speak, ah. all that all that is changing. Well, not really. Arsenal have said, I think, something along the lines of, um, "Well, we trust you, Theo. You know, we we don't think you want to leave the club, really. So why don't you?" stick around and, and leave on a free next summer. It doesn't make sense, does it? But that's the kind of thing I've been reading this morning. And uh, no doubt you'll be reading it later. So what do I make of it all? I'm not too sure, apart from I think Theo should stay. I don't think the club should allow players to get to the... Would, would you mind not clearing your throat over there? <laughs> um, are there any ladies in here? Right. I needed that. <laughs> There's nothing in it. But, um, but yeah, there's... A, there's not much left on uh, Theo's contract either, and and I don't think the club should should allow allow that state of affairs to occur. I know it's very easy for me to sit here. It's not that easy actually, but it's relatively easy for me to sit here and and say those things. But but I really feel the club should. I mean, we've got an economist in charge. They should they should say right, two years left on your contract. Are you going to sign a new deal? Yes or no? And the advisors start. I mean, an R in. Okay, then we'll sell you, and, and make it simple. Rather than leaving it till the last year, then it's all panic stations, then it's a crazy transfer deadline day, which we like as journalists. We we love that, don't we? Because it's great copy. But is it good for the club? No, it isn't. So let's let's just do business in a different way. That's that's my advice to the club. And I know the likes of Ivan Gazidis, Richard Law, David Mills, they'll all be listening to this, and they're our sort of triumvirate when it comes to negotiating these deals. So so where does where does the blame lie for this sort of thing? Does it lie? at Arsene Wenger's door, or those three. I think a bit of both. It lies with Bosman. It doesn't just lie with Bosman. It, yeah, Bosman has a lot to do with it, but um, but I certainly feel we can't just keep blaming players for feathering their own nests when their sh careers are so short, and uh, agents will be agents, and we've we just got to live with it. Agents are always gonna gonna try and get the best deal for their client, that's what they're there for. But I think the manager has, has something to do with this as well because he's played Theo out of position for so long he keeps saying he's a striker and then he plays him on the wing and then we've got Javinho who's never ever gonna be a striker as long as he's got um, I, I, I don't want to use that rude headband. expression as long as he's got a headband um, so as long as he's got a headband he will never be a striker and even if he took it off I don't think he would be so so why do we not try Theo there that's what you know we tried Javinho in pre-season didn't really work why not try Theo as a striker? Would you say he's a natural born finisher? He is just like Thierry Henry, wasn't he? A, a oh, winger, yeah. and then he then he came in the middle yeah. and scored millions of goals. Hey? But Theo has scored over a hundred goals at Newbury. I've just found that out today, so I'm going to use that piece of information. Isn't that a, isn't that a race course? It is a race course, but they've also got some some young football team. Young boys, I've, young boys, all playing together. I'm sorry, I'm just just yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Come and go as you feel fit, and and that's what happens at Arsenal because you know the players they don't come back though. That's the trouble. Not many of them do. Martin Keown, one of those rare people that did come back. Thierry Henry. Oh, Thierry Henry. That's another one. Anyone? Anyone else? I can't can't think of that many. No. Once they're gone, they're gone. It feels like Patrick Vieira didn't even come back in an ambassadorial capacity. Is instead doing that for Manchester City, which was a great waste as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, I think. Um, just to cut to the chase, what would I offer Theo? If they've rejected the £75,000 per week deal, um, I'd offer them £80,000. That's not a big jump, is it? I think they're looking at 100000 That's what they want. They reckon they can possibly get something close to it from Liverpool. Manchester City obviously would pay an awful lot more, but he, he supported Liverpool as a kid. So in a way, it would make sense for Theo to go there. Um, 
could be a new revolution at Liverpool. So it might not be the worst place to go to, to play football. But um, no, I think 80, 80... Oh, Phil Banana coming on. No, in no, fact, there's a no, lot. No, no, no. <laughs> there's a lot. It's um, breakfast here in the office. Oh, it's, it's not a special promotion then. No, Would no, you no. offer him a banana as well as... <laughs> yeah, Theo, you can have... You can have 80, How about a whole a, bunch? A How about a whole bunch? You know, that, that's the kind of thing that would tempt a player to stay. But um, what do you think, Alan? Do you think, um, what about the signing on fee? Five million pounds signing on fee. 75,000 pounds per week is on offer. His representatives have rejected Five it. Five million pounds signing on fee? That's fair enough. It would cost a fortune to replace him. Properly replace him. What is the world coming to? Don't you think that's fair? He's already signed on. He doesn't need to get another signing no, on but fee. That's the way it's done. Five. Five million signing on fee. Five allegedly. million signing on fee and nothing for the next five years. How about that? Well, no, and that's not very fair, five is it? He's got to quid, live on something. Five million. Oh, of course you can't live on five million quid, can you? Well, no, no, no. Not no. if you're a professional football league. No, can't. of course you've got to go to all yeah. those clubs, buy all those diamonds and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But what about the chairman? The chairman and five. I mean, not not particularly the Arsenal chairman, but chairman in general. You know, they've been making fortunes out of the game, ripping off the fans. And nothing was said because because back in those days we all used to wear those little flat caps and uh, and toe the line. String them up, I say. Yeah. String them up. So so you know what's wrong with the footballers? The footballers are the entertainers. We never moan about say Tom Cruise making a fortune, do we? <laughs> and Tom Cruise used to play for Arsenal, by the way. Not that Tom Cruise, a different Tom mm. Cruise. But what, Tom what's Cruise the gets twenty million pounds to make a movie, film. Mm. Let's say. It pulls in a billion dollars at the box office around the world, mm. and it's seen by a hundred million people overall. Mm. And then five million quid for for a signing on fee for a guy who's going to be on the bench and seen by you know forty five, fifty thousand people a week for forty two games. Try six. Come <laughs> on, <laughs> try sixty thousand. Plus, if he plays in a cup final, that will be seen by just as many people as, as a Tom Cruise film. And let's face it, Walcott's played in a few finals and he's made an impact in those finals, but scoring goals. But there's a bit more action in Tom Cruise movies. I'm not too sure about that. I think, I think, you, I think you've lost that argument, sorry to say. But um, so you think that, I mean, how would you, how would you deal with a player like Theo? Would you, would you allow it to get to the state where he's got one year to go on his contract and then it's all, it's all you know, panic, panic buttons blazing to try and get him to sign a new deal? Would you do it like that or would you? You're not going to like this. I don't but I think, I think, really, that you should wait till the end of the guy's contract and then renegotiate really it. But if we did that, then he could walk away on a free. He could, but then he wouldn't cost five million quid signing on fee and hundred thousand quid a week for the next year, would he? Well, I think he would because there might be a lot of uh, other potential people, well, not people, but clubs in the mix, all putting their counter offers forward, and then it would be a proper bidding war for a player that. By rights, we should be able to keep that. I'm just saying, I think there should be. Don't, didn't Manchester United and Spurs have some deal like that with Dimitar Berbatov? He came to the last year of his contract, and then some other option kicked in, and United kept him for another year. Not, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think we something need to like that. Throw in some options like that. But yeah. what irritates me is that is a player one year, even two years ahead of his contract, renegotiating it so that he doesn't get sold on for free in two years' time. Mm. Come on, he signed a contract for how many years at 75,000 quid a week. How many of you people out there earn 75,000 quid a week? Yeah, I mean, no, come that's... on. He signed his contract, stick to it, and then be a gentleman, be a loyal person, mm. yeah, and negotiate another one. Mm. And then, if you don't get a contract that you want, sign a quick one anyway so that Arsenal get some money. How about that? How about that? That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one, but like this, why is like this not guy from, that? Like they? this guy yeah. who five-year contract or what was his name oh and we were talking about will will we will i will am I right. am. will i am and i got yeah. a feeling oh, will I am. Sorry about william that. I mean, william i mean he had a five-year contract ended in june and then he signed another one so that his yeah, russian yeah. team would get some money yeah that's the way i saw it anyway yeah must have been uh, am I just, am some I rubles talking? under the table might have changed hands may exactly. or may not have. so so arsenal don't do things like that no a decent club don't do those, those we don't have that sort at Arsenal Football Club. So anyway, it looks like um, even even the way things stand, it could be a case of a bidding war ensuing. Uh, Manchester City, apparently interested. Uh, their bid for Scott Sinclair, I heard, is on hold until they find out what the deal is with Theo Walcott. Uh, it sounds like the latest I heard is he's not going to be sold. He's going to be kept on at the club till January. So then 
his value is going to plummet. Don't you think Arsenal should be bidding for Maya Yoshida of the uh, Japan Olympic national team? A centre back at just two million quid. Southampton mm-hmm. signing today. Somebody send him a pen. Well, you think he's uh, he's that good? Two million quid. Yeah, it's value for money, two right? Two million quid. I mean, that's all is it? And he's that's not all asking is it? for five million. If you don't mind me asking a for... personal question. That's he's all he's, he's about 180, 182. Um, so what's that, six foot? Four, and actually more like 186. And he's good in the air? He's good in is the air. Is he tough enough to handle the Premier League? He is indeed. In my humble opinion, he can handle it. And Southampton will be getting a bargain if he goes there. I'm sorry, I'm not even on. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've Hi. sort of been off camera most of this. Yeah, so yeah no, not, no, nobody's listening to me continue, anyway. Yeah. So what about, OK, what about this deal then? Theo goes to Manchester City. Arsenal get Edin Zeko as, as a make-way. Is that a good bit of business? A oh. make way. I think. Mm. I think Theo would be the make way. Wouldn't no, <laughs> I don't think so. Some of his detractors would say you're right, but even even the media who haven't been Theo's best mate. I would have said Adam Johnson, but he's already popped and yeah. popped off his clogs. Hasn't That's he? a great shame. So yeah. so anyway, um, Chelsea, another another team that have been interested. How about in sending him to Liverpool and getting Stuart Downing as a make way? No thanks. No thanks. No thanks. <laughs> that How was about they're going to convert him into a left back? By the way, I know. I, I heard. Did you see Honda. That? Look, Honda. Honda. You've got like thirty-six hours to sign Honda Keske from Chuska Moscow. Do it now. So what you seen? Theo's not going to go to Moscow, though. No, no. He yeah. can just sort of hang around and do nothing for a year and get and walk away for free. Right. Talking of other possible deals. Well, no. Let's talk about a deal that's happened. Not not in great depth because I don't think you know an, an awful lot sorry to say this but Henry Lansbury what did you make of him I mean he's been a surely you mean Henri Lansbury yeah well he's been called that on Henri occasions. Lansbury so Henry um, Lansbury is off gone to Nottingham Forest yep. for a million he's gone to Nottingham was Forest that, was that enough money for a player of his ability well probably, actually, probably a bit of a bargain yeah a bargain for Forest I mean, is, 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 he, is he a guy who didn't quite reach his potential or hasn't reached it yet you see, yeah a lot of people Forest now mm. are going to think like Million, piece of cake. I mean, we, yeah. could, we could have uh, Theo Walcott signing on for five million just for the signing on fee, or we can have Henri Lansbury. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he write those uh, murder she wrote books? Oh, that was Angela Lansbury. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Angela. And um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, Nottingham Not Forest might have, might have a bargain there, just like they had when they signed Trevor Francis for nine hundred and ninety-nine thousand nine hundred and thirty-seven pounds. Oh it was. yeah, so he's worth the same as Trevor Francis. Exactly, he's the same as the Trevor Francis. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the next Trevor Francis. So just somebody, as handsome. Somebody, somebody can use that on one of their uh, transfer stories to get to get loads of traffic. We oui, we oui, the next Trevor Francis. And uh, I think last time we spoke about Ibrahim Afellay possibly joining Arsenal or Liverpool on loan. Well, Liverpool seem to manage to beat Arsenal in the transfer market lately, judging by that uh, Nui Sahin, Sahin deal. And Isco is only 20. He's also at Malaga, which was the club where we plucked Santi Cazorla from. And uh, you say that. Yeah, I was very careful. I think I might have used one. One of the words was incorrect. Hey, but, banana, banana. If you like a banana, out there. mail me at alan at jsoccer.com, A-L-A-N at jsoccer.com. I'll know. give you a banana. No, I'll tell you what, I'll just, I'll just send you a PDF of the magazine instead. I think, I'll the think things the you do to try and sell magazines there. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so uh, Malaga, are they still a selling club? They've had a lot of financial problems. You haven't heard anything through the grapevine? Uh, no, but they do do these really cool little donkey things that you can buy in their souvenir shop mm. and bring them home. Oh, right, and this guy could be thrown in as well. Yeah, because he's a bit of a donkey. Yeah. <laughs> no. We don't think so, do I we, think really? He's decent enough player, yeah. Malaga are. Yeah, they're still a selling club. Okay, let me ask you this. This is slightly off topic. It's very off topic. Alicia Usmanov, would you be afraid of, of, this, of this large, large sort of man with a large amount of money taking over Arsenal Football Club if you were an Arsenal fan? Well, yeah, because he's got a girl's name, hasn't he? Alicia, oh yes, yeah. it's a bit girly, isn't it? It's quite girly. I thought when you said Alicia Osman, I thought it was like, like like someone who had a number one hit single a few years ago. Because there are shares trading hands as we speak. Forty shares have been bought at seventeen thousand pound each. So seventeen thousand pounds plus. It's each. a bit more than that. So uh, that's a lot of money, right, for one share in Arsenal Football Club. So if you did get given a share, then you'd be seventeen thousand pound plus better off. But Alicia Osmanov allegedly has managed to pick up. Oh, there's, yeah, there's all kinds of that going on. We've got Doritos, Doritos in now. Doritos here now. Doritos. I mean, it's about time we got some money from uh, just been, the Doritos just been, company. My breakfast just been delivered. Doritos and bananas. Yeah. You're not serious. I'm serious, I'm afraid, yeah. That's, all that's, right, I that's might. not football food. I could, I could perhaps, like, I could eat a copy of Jane Sucker magazine. 
You could eat that. Freddie Longberg on the front there. better than then. reading it. Oh, <laughs> sorry, you set yourself up for that. <laughs> What's all these things falling over around me? But um, but yeah, so shares trading trading hand. We don't know quite what's going on. Well, she it? hasn't had a hot hit single for yeah. a long time, has she? Yeah, and she's not had a hit single. And uh, share, I mean, and, not Alicia. And also, haven't had any silverware either. Mm. So some fans, I'm not saying I'm one of them, but some fans are suggesting that Alicia Usmanov's millions and zillions and killions and twillions might come in useful for strengthening the squad because it, it seems that we've always got. A, a positive balance when it comes to transfer deals, yeah. and the clubs that win things tend to have a negative balance. You can't buy success. Tell Manchester. Oh, hang on. No. Yeah, Manchester yeah, City Manchester. didn't buy it. Blackburn didn't buy it back in the day, did they? And no, Blackburn goes Rovers on won. and on. But look what happened to Blackburn Rovers. Didn't they lose? Yeah, to like, yeah. Uh, Yeovil Town last week or something. Yeah, and then look at what happened to Leeds back in the day. We we all thought how clever they were spending all that silly money on Rio Ferdinand and so on and so on. And then look at them now. But actually, they Strongly. made a profit on the open real Yeah, they, they did. They did. It's You're quite enough. right to mention that. So, other transfer deals going on involving Arsenal. Daniel Boateng, probably don't know a lot about him. Who does? He's 19. He's off to Oxford United for six months. I've seen him. He's uh, a centre back. Well, not to be bad, honest, but a kid with a name like Boating going to the Oxford and yeah. Cambridge, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, boat race, you know. I'm glad you brought that up because uh, that's significant. And hopefully he's going to make it. Well, Boateng seems to be a name. If you've got that name, you're going to do it in football or yeah. politics. Think about the politics one. That's, that's a tricky one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, who else? We've got Marouane Shemak. Have you seen a lot of Marouane Shemak? And, and if so, what do you actually think of him? He's not that bad. Come off it. <laughs> he's not that bad. He's a professional footballer making yeah. decent money. And I, I, exactly. Give it. I've got it. Give Theo Walcott Shemak some money and give Shemak to some team who, you know, some Shemak team like Aston Villa. Oh, Funny you should mention Shemak because Besiktas are interested. Besiktas. It sounds a bit like Shemak. Yeah. Um, there's a high possibility, in inverted commas, of him joining them. That's according to um, a Turkish newspaper called Milliet. Milliet. I thought you'd like that name. But this no. rascal has Milliet. <laughs> He's got we are the newspapers who say Milliet. <laughs> well, anyway. Marrow and Schumach's uh, stats make interesting reading, I think. He's got two years left on his contract, so it's a good time to sell. Uh, that's what I say. Good time to sell. And played to how many games last season? 23 games. Only scored one goal, three assists. So who's going to buy him? Oh, Besiktas. Besiktas. Because they haven't got TVs in Turkey, so yeah. you know, they're yeah. just watching his video. Well, they might have seen him in his first season, in which he played 52 games. Scored, I can't believe this by the way, but this is the stat I read 14 goals, 9 assists. That's not bad, is it? Talking about the reserves, though, right? 50, I don't know. I don't know which competition he's playing. That's, that's 52 his, games. That's his Wikipedia page, and his mum wrote it. Yeah, somebody, somebody's been messing with Wikipedia, that's for sure. So, um, who could replace somebody like Schmack? How about Atletico Bilbao's uh, Fernando Llorente? How about Tosh, who just walked in the door? He could replace yeah, him. Yeah, well, you know, can he, has he brought his boots? Yeah, I think he looks, boots. he looks fit. Yeah, he certainly does. He's, luckily, he's off camera because you girls yeah, yeah. out there would be all excited. Yeah, I think they would. I think they would. So, uh, Llorente's got a 36 million euros release clause and he's not going anywhere unless somebody coughs up that kind of money. Is he worth it? And it sounds like a damage and another is a signing on fee. Um, good question. I don't know the answer to that. I think it's whatever he can get. So, the clubs interested are Juventus. Arsenal, Tottenham, Chelsea, Manchester City, where's he going to go or is he going to stay at Bilbao? Not the team beginning with A. Not yeah, if he's got Arsenal. Yeah, exactly. He's not going there. No, not if the other four are interested. Oh, okay. They've got money, they've got players, they haven't got a French manager. And, just kidding, I'm just kidding, sorry. And talking about mm. Atletic, Atletic Bilbao, another one of their players, Javi Martinez, who was sort of tenuously linked with Arsenal, sounds like he's on the way to Bayern Munich. Mm. He went there. Had a medical in secret, apparently, and it looks like a deal's been done, but Athletic Bilbao are not very happy about it, so perhaps a deal hasn't been done. So there's all lot, lots of sneaky things going on during transfer windows. Would you say that? or? Yes, indeed, all the time, actually. In it's fact, outside transfer windows, it gets even sneakier because you yeah. know people are planning ahead without telling anybody, aren't they? Very naughty. And talking of sneaky, some people might say Robin Van Persie was sneaky. Not me, of course. I wouldn't say something so, so rude. But Manuel Almunia has come out and mm -hmm. said... That he thinks um, that Robin Van Persie thought that Arsenal didn't sign players as good as he wanted. But I think you've already spoken about Cazorla and Podolsky mm. and Giroud. And, and do you think they were good enough? 
to keep Man, Robin, Man Robin, Robin yeah. Yeah. on board. Yeah, I think he just he's well, just making up excuses. Oh, he's making up as he goes along. So what else have I got for you? I've got Jan and Villa on well, the way to Arsenal, Tottenham, News, uh, Newcastle, not News, Newcastle or Everton. What do you rank? What do you make of that? I think you should go to Villa, don't you? I mean, yeah. Villa, Villa. I mean, come on, wait a minute. That twenty-two-year-old's not going there. But Aston Villa are buying like Chesterfields and. Uh, oh yeah, they bought somebody. Yeah, they're buying all they? sorts of yeah, yeah. young, unproven talent. Yeah, and Villa is far too proven to go to Villa. And too expensive, probably. More than likely, something like fifteen million pounds. I haven't got the figure here. And um, what about Kabai to Arsenal? You know, uh, I actually saw this. I don't know if it was mocked up on Photoshop, but somebody, somebody's been messing about, either in the Arsenal club shop or, or it's. Oh, it's the real deal. His name has actually come up with the squad number 17 and you can buy a Kabai shirt from the Arsenal club shop. I think they're swiftly taking it down. But um, do you think do you think it's just somebody messing around or do you think there's some mileage in it? I think there's plenty of mileage in that one. Yeah? You know, definitely. Exclusive lots to this podcast. Lots Vcast of mileage. Podcast. Yeah, so number 17, Arsenal. Definitely. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I've just got to bring... We're sort of getting quite near. All right, just another five minutes, max, maximum. Right, Jovino, right? I like this. I, like, I think, I don't know how amusing you're going to find it, but I certainly found it amusing. He's asked for patience, right? And Jovino... Why, is he a doctor? No, <laughs> he should be, because I don't think he's um, a striker, that's for sure. He's not a bad winger, but he's not... I don't see a lot of end product from Jovino. What do you make of his performances for Arsenal? He's only been there like, a season like, and a I, bit. I, I don't like a guy who sticks his hair on in the morning. You don't like it? No, no, I think he's been a very average. I mean, he had a good bit of fun with Joey Barton last year. That was quite fun. Mm. But uh, we haven't seen as much as he's capable. Is he I another think. Alex Sleb? What, you mean he's going to end up at Birmingham? In, maybe. In maybe. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps. But he's asked for patience, but not for himself, but for Olivier Giroud. And Giroud's only played two games. Cheeky person. I think that's a bit much, don't you? He said, I hope the fans show patience. <laughs> and I thought it's... He may well have said it in French and he said, I thought this was very sort of kind or unkind of him to say there's big pressure on him because he's, um, I think he used the word substitute in the translation, substituting Robin Van Persie, you know, obviously he meant replacing. So, I mean, heaping pressure on a teammate's shoulders, that's a little bit naughty, don't you think, and ask him for patience when he's just played two games. And he, and, uh, he admitted, which I found... Well, at least he's been admitted. He admitted, it took me a long time to adjust. But do you think he's adjusted yet? I don't think he's adjusted yet. Yeah, yeah, he keeps moving, so. but it just, yeah. it just keeps... It won't just stay on. <laughs> and um, I think finally, because I know you've got to go, you're a busy man. Finally, Clint Dempsey. What's going to happen to him? I mean, he was linked with Arsenal. Got 17 goals last season. Um, he's also been heavily linked with Sunderland. £8 million, pounds, the figure being talked about. So where's he going to end up? And why have Arsenal suddenly dropped out of the running? Uh, he can play on the wing too. Slip him a million and a half to Fulham and uh, play him in the reserves. It's all he deserves. A guy who holds a club to ransom like that. Yeah, so it's naughty. Not on, it's not on, it's not on. Naughty boy. Signed a contract, didn't he? He's got a contract. He's got a contract. Yeah, he's still... And stick to it. How, how long's left? About a year, is it? I think. I didn't oh, write it down. About a year, okay. So he's looking, Approximately. For, a, he's looking for a huge raise and signing on fee. See, so I'm he's Fulham. pretending he wants to go to Manchester City, right? So Fulham, <laughs> well, he's not going to get in there, is he? But do you think he'd get in the Arsenal team? Clint Dempsey? Is he a good squad player? Is he worth eight million quid? Something to aim all those crosses at for all the wingers that uh, Arsenal have got fired enough. Yeah, so so you'd, you'd get him, would you? Eight million? Yeah, Song's only worth about five million, wasn't mm -hmm. he? Of oh, course. And uh, he's 29 now. 29. 29. So that's the end of the youth policy. If you keep buying players, he's sort of... Yeah. Um, but he's not 37, because 37 is not old either. But do you see Clint Dempsey as a sort of Champions League? Player. Is he that good that he should be playing in a team that finishes in the top four? Or is Fulham about as good as it's going to get for him? Probably about as good as it's going to get, actually, to be honest. And that's a, a good Jack Nicholson movie, by the way. Yeah, no, I think um, that's about as good as it's going to get from, from us, because yeah. I can tell when you want to move. No, no, um, I'm really enjoying myself. You want to move? Look, I should have signed you on a longer well, deal, right? No, no, no. I should have definitely yeah. signed you on a... On I should a, have signed a longer contract. Yeah. With an a, option to keep you another five minutes. I've got, but, I've got an hour left on my contract, you're so I'm going to renegotiate it. Right, okay. Until the next time, up the Gooners.